Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from across the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Venezuela denounces US veto blocking access to IMF's COVID-19 funds. Iraq set to hold parliamentary elections after October 2019 mass protests. Indigenous activists occupy Petro Peru pipeline facility to protest contamination. And finally, health workers in Guinea-Bissau go on strike against unsafe working conditions. In our first story, we take a look at Venezuela, which has stated that the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, has blocked access to $5 billion. The funds are part of the special drawing rights to help countries deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. The amount was authorized in August as part of a $650 billion global fund. However, the IMF said that Venezuela could not use the funds. The reason given was supposed concerns about the legitimacy of the government. US-backed coup leader Juan Guaido also proclaimed that the funds would be discussed during the talks in Mexico. Venezuelan Vice President Delzi Rodriguez condemned the IMF's decision at a United Nations meeting on Wednesday. She argued that it was the result of a veto by the United States which is the fund's largest shareholder. She added that over 430 U.S. economic sanctions had cost Venezuela over $63 billion. She also condemned the unequal distribution of funds under the special drawing rights. The Group of Seven, or G7, countries received 40% of the allocation. Meanwhile, developing countries received only 2.3% so far. Unilateral U.S. sanctions are blocking critical medical supplies required by Venezuela. Most recently, the U.S.-owned Portuguese bank Novo Banco has been blocking a payment for an order of 15 million vaccines since July. Early voting in Iraq's upcoming parliamentary elections started on October 8th. Over 25 million people will be eligible to vote and elect 329 members of parliament on October 10th. The country has been divided into 83 constituencies. 3,240 candidates are contesting the elections. However, the popular unrest against the government has led some to believe that there may be a low turnout. Iraq witnessed mass protests against corruption, lack of governance and economic conditions in October 2019. Then Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi resigned and fresh elections were announced for 2021. However, the protest continued this year with people demanding an overhaul of the political system. They also denounced the government's failure to prevent the killings of activists and protesters. Since 2019, the Iraqi Human Rights Commission has documented around 600 such killings. The rate of poverty in Iraq is hovering between 27 to 32 percent. The unemployment rate has also reached 40 percent in recent years. Citing the government's failure to address the demands for reform, the Iraqi Communist Party has also withdrawn from the elections. The communists were a part of the largest alliance in the Iraqi parliament in 2018. However, it withdrew its support from the Mahdi government after 2019 protests. In a statement in July, the Communist Party emphasized the need for a safe and fair electoral environment. It called for an end to the proliferation of arms and demanded accountability against corruption. Around 200 protesters have shut down a pipeline facility in Peru's Manseriche district. People from the indigenous Avayun community occupied station number 5 of the North Peruano pipeline on October 4. They are demanding that the government comply with existing agreements on environmental remediation. Other demands include the provision of basic services and proper infrastructure. They have also asked for the creation of a fund for the decontamination of areas affected by oil operations. The action is part of the Amazon strike launched on October 1st. It has been organized by the Avayun Rio Apaga Native Federation and the peoples affected by petroleum activity. Nor Peruano is operated by the state-owned company Petro Peru. It pumps approximately 200,000 barrels of crude oil every day. The government has documented 37 spills on the pipeline since 1996. However, according to Earthrights, independent sources put the number at 190. 
the Peruvian government had to declare a public health emergency across four whole river basins in 2016. Protesters have set up camps inside the Petro Peru facility demanding a response from the government. And for our final story, we go to Guinea-Bissau, where health workers have been on strike since September 20th. Doctors, nurses, and other health workers at the Simao Mendes National Hospital were the first to walk out. United under the banner of Let's Stay Home to be Valued, they are protesting unsafe working conditions. A 2017 United Nations report found that most clinics and basic healthcare posts lacked electricity and water supplies. There was also a critical shortage of medical personnel and wages in the healthcare sector remained low. Striking workers are demanding an increase in the health budget in 2022. They have also demanded adequate staffing and the validation of professional credentials. The government reportedly suspended risk allowances for health workers between April and June. Workers are also demanding that the outstanding amount be paid. The strike initially impacted all medical operations, including COVID-19 wards. However, essential services were soon restored by Sinquas, Sintesa, and UNTGCS unions. Despite this, the government brought in military doctors to replace striking workers. The move was denounced as undemocratic, and eight directors at the Simao Mendes Hospital resigned. That's all for today's episode. We will be back next week with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Thank you.